Let's talk Vue.js. In this video, we're going to go through how we can implement Vue, which is a really nice UI framework for JavaScript, and just make our page both fast and easier to work with utilizing some of the many features that Vue has. The first step is to import Vue into the application. And we can do that by just using the, the CDN where it lies. So if we go to CDN.js, this is a really nice resource for uh, JavaScript libraries and other stuff. You can search for Vue and we're just going to pick the latest 2 point something version. In my case, this is 2.6.12. And then down here, we'll just grab view.min.js. If you click on this little icon over here, it'll actually copy the script tag and that's all we need for now. So if we go down to the bottom of our page, we'll put it right here. And we want to load view when everything else is done loading and that's why we're putting it at the end and not in the head. Anyway, if we refresh the page and then go into the developer tools, network, we'll see that view has now been loaded. Great. All right, so the next thing we need to do is that we need view to be mounted onto the, into the application. So in order for us to do this, we need to wrap uh, all of the content within a div or some other tag, but div makes the most sense here, I think. I'm just going to move this into the div and then I'll give the div an ID of app. Perfect. All right, we're going to create a new script tag down here. Script. And this is where we'll initialize view. So new view like so. Perfect. So now we also need to configure it so it actually works with our page because we haven't really done anything. And we can do that by passing view an object. And then we can ask view to bind to a part of our page. In this case, we want to bind it to the div we just created. So we'll say L equals, and then remember that hashtag means ID. So we're looking for an ID with the name of app, like so. Perfect. And then next up, there's a mounted function in view. This function will run when view has been mounted onto the page. So let's console log it and see that it's working. There we go. And indeed, it says mounted. This is all that you need. Great. So right now, this uh, this car array resides up in the script. I want to put this into view instead. And to do that, we go back down here and we create a new element or function called data. It looks like this. And it takes an object like so, and then it returns one. This is the syntax. Don't ask me why. Anyway, within here, we can just pass any object we want our page to have. So in this case, we're going to say car array because that's the same as the last one. And we're going to initialize it to an empty array. Nice. And if we wanted to, we can now debug this or console log it by saying this, the car array. And there we go. It's empty at this point. All right. I'm going to just remove this real quick and then we can uh, can keep on going. Now we need to be able to add our our cars to this list again. And for us to create functions and such in view, we create a new property or key or whatever you want to call it on this object that's called methods. Like so. And within here we can define all the methods we need. So I'm going to create a new method a method called car and the car is just going to read stuff from the page. Anyway, um, now we need access to the fields up here. How do we do that in view? Well, in view, we can easily bind our input to um, a uh, variable in the data uh, object down here. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to say model equals empty string and producer equals empty string. There we go. And then in the input over here, we'll remove the ID because it's not needed anymore. And we'll say V model and the name for the variable. So model. There we go. And we'll do the same up here. V model and I called it producer, but just, just let's just rename that to make as well. All right. Uh, yeah, so there we go. And if you want to see something really cool, we can now say hello down here. And you'll notice that it's just reflected right away in the in the input field, which is really nice. And what makes this even more cool is that 
this will also be updated automatically the other way around. So as soon as I start writing down here, the model, uh, or the make, sorry, it says make twice. Let's just fix that. The model will be uh, will be updated down here right away, which is really really cool, I think. Anyway, let's just proceed. So now we need to add this car onto the car array. So in order for us to do that, then we need to say car array dot push. And once again, we'll push an object. We'll say make equals this. This re refers to the to the current view instance. And then we can take the, the variable we have up here. So this equals this one up here. And then we can do this again. We'll say model this dot model and just to make sure that everything is working we'll lock this but now we have an issue anyway hold on all right now we have an issue because this method is never being triggered and ordinary in, in uh, javascript you're using the on click well in view we use the um the um the add sign and then we say click and that just means on click want to use add but I call it add car so we'll say that instead like so and if we then say test test over here you'll see that it should have pushed it onto the oh right okay so we of course need to refer to this over here so it knows that we're talking about the car array up here let's try again test test two. and there we have it length one and we have an object over here Great, that's working. And all the other stuff you're seeing here is because Vue has been uh, doing some stuff to it and it's just subscribing and such so we can easily manipulate it later on. Anyway, let's keep going because what's really cool about Vue is that we now, if we now want to reset this input, we can just say this dot make equals empty string, this dot model equals empty string, and then when we enter the car over here, test, test two, add it directly uh, up there, uh, sorry, removes everything from here. And behind the scenes, you'll also know that this car ray has been uh, has been updated, but we can't see that just yet. So let's fix that. So first of all, over here, I want to tell how many cars there are in the in the array. And we can do that by using these double um, brackets. And we'll just say car array. And when you're writing in the DOM, you don't need to specify this like down here. So we'll say car array dot length. And now it says zero cars. Let's say again, Skoda, perp, add, and you'll notice that this is now updated and it cleared it right here. Really nice. Okay, so what do we need to do now? Well, we of course also need to um, need to add this to the to the list so we can actually see it. So what we want to do now is I'm going to take this list of cars, and we are going to we're going to create a you will write here so we can create a list. Then we'll say Ellie, and then we can iterate through our car array by using v4, and we'll say for each car in car array, and you'll notice that it's empty, which is also because we're not saving anything yet to local storage. And then over here we can say car dot make. Car dot model. Let's refresh. Let's go to superb. Add it, and there we have it. Nils, hello. Anyway, so the next thing we need to do now is to add the other functionality that we had before. So first of all, we want to populate this car array from local storage. So let's take a look at what we did before, because we can just take this, put it down here. We format and then get cars. I'm gonna remove this and then we'll say this the car array and then it's now loading it from local storage. And as you can see, it's empty, so that's, that's why it's not being reflected. All right. Next up, we need to save the car to the to the um, local storage. So if we look up into the save cars right now, we're just simply stringifying it and then setting it in the local storage and we can do the same again. So a lot of this stuff can just be reused down here. Like so. We'll say this of course because we're ref uh, referring to the array up here. 
we'll save it and we'll say Skoda Superb and there it is I'll refresh the page and there it is again still working and that means that we can now remove the refresh function is no longer needed because view is taking care of that so that wasn't even needed in the first place save cars is not needed anymore and add we can also remove this car array is not needed because it's in the view and then we just need to be able to clear everything again so we're going to create a new method down in our view instance say clear and then we want to dictate what it has to do so it has to empty the car array i believe we can just say clear if i'm not mistaken oh of course we need to um we need to of course uh, call the function right now so we're here we're going to replace it with views on click method we'll just say clear and then down here uh, we should just replace the array with an empty array and let's test again let's go to superb added test test two anyway now that that is working we're just going to remove this part as it's no longer needed as it's already being done in the mounted function and let's just see if this is working now it's cleared we're not clearing it from local storage so that still needs to be done anyway let's look into a uh, low storage and let's see what's what's inside here there we go we have the two cars well cars or whatever you want to call it lastly down here we can then say local storage dot remove item cars and this should be working like it was doing before there we go this is really easy and we have just um combined all the logic into this really nice instance of just view and we don't have to think about refreshing because view uses a two-way binding that means that whenever we refresh something within our update object over here it'll automatically be reflected within the html which is really cool all right so the last thing i want to do is i just want to introduce you quickly to components um, and we can create a component that represents this item just to make it a bit easier in view we can just say view.component we'll call it car and i'll show you why that's useful in a second and then that should be it then we'll tell it what uh, properties it has so we'll add a props attribute and we'll call it one um, make and one model those are the props that can be passed and then lastly we'll give it a template attribute and then we can just copy this part put it into this and then over here we of course can't go through the array because it doesn't know about it but we can take the make and the model like so and then up here we can replace this with car we can remove this and this and notice that it's not uh, well let's just add something and test test it's not working and it's not working because we still need to pass it the um the make and the model to the to the car um component we just created because it doesn't know about it and we can buy bind that in view by using the colon and then what we want to bind it to so in this case we want to bind make to car dot make and we'll see that now test is showing up over here we'll bind model to car.model and there we have it skoda burp, and there we go it's still working so this whole binding thing you can see as for each of the cars in our car array we're binding the car.model onto the model property and the make onto the make property that is then being passed to this template and evaluated anyway i hope this has been uh, been a good introduction into how you can use view to simplify your, uh, your UI. Thank you for watching.